Manipur. As someone who has served in Northeast for yes. a long time, how do you look at the Manipur issue? Is it a religious thing or is it a tribal clash? It is a tribal on? clash. Basically, it is a tribal clash. Uh, religious, see, the, for example, we have several identities. And when it comes to tribals, Manipur, for example, let us come to the point of Mani Manipur, the strongest identity is their tribal uh, nature. That is the first thing. Religion comes second or third. Pol political affiliation may be fourth or so. First is what tribe I belong to. And even we, for example, the so-called outsiders, we never come to know which religion they belong to. In their dress, in their food habits, in their behavior, in their um, features, they all look alike. So the religious identity takes a back seat. And that is why, basically, the issue is ethnic. It is <clears throat> the difference, you know, and of course, the political interests are involved, which are of, you know, political nature, but again, mostly economic, related to land, for example, when come, you know, you come to the point of um, uh, Manipur issue, the recent one, the March 27, uh, last year, the High Court passed an order that the state government should take up matter of classifying Maitis into scheduled tribe category. It was a directive passed by the High Court. Just before that, a few months before that, government of Manipur had uh, passed a land uh, reform act by which the entrance into reserve forest was totally banned. So the cookies who were you know masters of the whatever was left other than the valley, they could go cultivate, clean up and cultivate like June cultivation. There was a prohibition on that. These two things together they thought <coughs> they are going against us. Two things happened almost simultaneously. The state government's reform act and they're strictly implementing it. And the directive issued by the High Court. So the land was the issue. And the government uh, controlled the land uh, issue because a lot of opium cultivation also was taking place. And that was being sent to Myanmar. That was also going on. Maybe ordinary people are not involved in that. <clears throat> the mafia running it was doing that also. So they were also hurt. But basically, <clears throat> it, I would uh, uh, say that you know it still remains a tribal issue. Were there influences there from Myanmar? Like there were a lot of reports or unconfirmed reports saying yes. no weapons coming in from Myanmar. See, for Asians. every yeah, no, like Myanmar has been supporting traditionally, not only here, even they were supporting Metis. Metis were in the forefront of insurgency in the 60s and 70s, and you know, ever since independence, they had you know people liberation army and they had uh, uh, camps in Myanmar. So Myanmar has been supporting insurgency in Manipur, not particularly cookies. Even the Metis were receiving help. But the Metis have been slightly mainstreamed uh, earlier than the others. And maybe their becoming Vaishnava Hindus helped in that. Otherwise, even their joining Hinduism or that Vaishnavi Hinduism also happened very late in the history of Metis. They were having a separate religion. It happened post-independence? No, just happened. before that. Uh, just before that. This um, uh, 20th century only. This happened and I'm forgetting the name of that religion. They had their own religion. Tribal religion. So, uh, mainstreaming happens through various means you know so 
religion became one thing, you know, like and BJP coming into power and all that. So mainstreaming, one factor was met as far as Makis were concerned. But they were also feeling that as far as, uh, you know, land is concerned, even in their own state, they were not allowed to buy land outside the valley. See, northeast by and large, there is a rule under which we can't go and buy land. For example, Arunachal Pradesh. You can't go and buy land. The land, if at all, you know, some Kerala's have gone there and they have done some uh, sort of agriculture or that, but the land was taken in the name of the local people. You can't buy land. But Metis were, their complaint was that we are from this very state and still we are not able to buy land. And the cookies were thinking that now Metis are mainstreamed, they are sharing the government jobs, they are slightly better off. With that kind of resources, if they come to our territory, our land also will be lost. That is, that is the psychology, that is the uh, you know, basic reason. Like a particular tribe suddenly becoming mainstreamed in all sense, you know, politically and resource-wise. And uh, they are trying to spread. These people don't have that kind of resource. They can't match. So naturally people will sell. Whoever gives you more money. This happens in everywhere, even in our state. So uh, that is where the suspicion, mutual distrust began. And the administration and judiciary also, you know, both did a slightly, I would say, you know, like these, these things should have been taken into account before rushing into such drastic uh, uh, steps. Like judiciary, they just, it was not implemented, it was a directive, but then that was, you know, already distress was there. Administration tried to strictly implement the forest law, eviction from the reserve forest lands. This happened. These were the two reasons, and all happened. During you know, March 27 was the judgment day and along with that the government had started uh, evicting people from the reserve forest land uh, mainly because they were uh, into uh, illegal cultivation of <coughs> So if it is okay. ethnic, if it is purely ethnic, yes. how did it become a Hindu versus Christian? No, it, it, it is because what happens? Is it, is it due to politics? Or? Uh, no, it's, there, there are other reasons also, basically politics, but more than that, apparently, for example, uh, you know, anybody who is um, saying it superficially, number of churches burnt. So you would see, you know, temples only 10, churches hundreds. See, that is one, for example, I'm telling you. The churches there <coughs> are not the kind of churches we have here, we see here. Everything is thatched. Their house, their house, the church, everything is thatched roof, simple. And it is there everywhere. Hundred will, uh, people living, there is a church. That may not be the case with the temples. Temples, <laughs> you have elaborate uh, ceremonies to go through before you, you know, complete that and you have a you know, proper, you don't. But Christianity as such, you know, it is there, in fact, it is a positive side. The building is not important. So you have large number of them. And churches are not being particularly targeted. When the whole village is being raided by a particular right, church also becomes part of it. But if you see the statistics or data, you have a scope for uh, you know, analyzing it in a different manner. Like why only 10 temples were burned whereas uh, thousands of churches were burned. So I would say on the ground, these churches are mostly thatched roof, simple buildings. And you have for even 50 people living together, there, there would be, that would be, you know, that aspect would be catered for. Whereas Maitis or the, you know, uh, they were not having that kind of a system. So is it like uh, cookies or um, Christians and... Uh, ah, they are. Ma ma Maitis have uh, some Christians also. Maitis. Even Muslims. Some of them. Some. But basically, uh, Hindus 
but I, I would qualify that you know Hinduism because of they have a different uh, identity as Vaishnava Hindu and they uh, are of recent uh, origin they, are, they had their own uh, religion and otherwise the tribal have that's what I'm telling for example most of my colleagues from Manipur now I am trying to find out whether they are uh, Methi or you know <laughs> their dress their food habits their everything is same look wise Features, everything is same. And in their gathering, they would be all, you know, huddled together. Now we, because this issue has come up, the rest of the country is trying to know who, who was that colleague, was, was he a Maiti or was he a cookie? But uh, haven't there been uh, clashes even before this, probably in the 80s, even when you served, weren't there yes, ethnic uh, strife? Uh, ethnic strife, uh, no, were there, but mostly it was all directed against the central government. For example, when the... Not within, PL, the, uh, within that. For example, see years ago, say, say two or three decades ago, the cookies were finding my thieves also taking up arms against the central government. In fact, they were... Uh, the uh, People's Liberation Army, PLA, was a much more organized uh, uh, underground uh, arrangement of the uh, Manipur state than the cookies. So then they must have been happy seeing them all fighting uh, f for a separate uh, entity. But the statehood was given, uh, you know, then they're uh, converting also helped then joining BJP they are coming into power so whether one likes it or not that becomes part of mainstreaming because you are becoming part of a mainstream political party whether it is Congress or BJP is a secondary question that is my point so another interesting aspect of Northeast is that you know, BJP now has a very strong foothold in the Northeast yes which is very surprising for, for an outsider. Yes. Like how, do, how did they manage to do that? As someone who is, you know... No, no, that's experience. what telling, I'm telling you. The new generation, uh, Northeast people, they are ready to integrate with the mainstream. And joining a mainstream political party, whether it is BJP or Congress, is a clear option. And maybe at the moment, People must be thinking that, yes, in any case, we have to mainstream for our own good. Then comes which party? So it is a matter of common sense. Had there been Congress in, uh, in the center, I'm sure they would have joined Congress party. Because now their aim is development, integration, job opportunities, things like that. What must have prompted, how, how did this transition happen? Because in the 80s, 90s and all, they wanted to be separated from yes, the country. Yes, yes. But now they want to be part of India and want to be mainstreamed. So how, how That is, happened? you know, over a period of time they have uh, realized <clears throat> that it is futile to go on. Because they have lost a lot of time, precious time. And they also know that traditional way of living has to change of uh, zoom cultivation or you know agriculture and uh, cultivation without owning so they realized that you know this is not going to work for them but by the time that generation disappeared new generation they grew up with all these possibilities and uh, more of exposure. education exposure and uh, most of the youngsters are outside even in I'm sure Calcutta Bangalore Everywhere you find a lot of uh, Manipuri boys and girls working and they are very smart, uh, you know, they pick up uh, things fast, good in English, Hindi may not be that good but then, and the education there, you know, thanks again to the Christian missionary, it's very good, they have uh, good schools, so all this has helped and there is a realization <coughs> that <coughs> it is better to uh, be main, mainstreamed. That is the only way. And on the part of the government, it's not only BJP, even before that, they have been focusing. Initially, maybe, you know, we had far more serious issues. Uh, Northeast was not getting this kind of a consideration. 